Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the live stream for this morning. We're going to talk about how you actually put courses in your shopping cart, as well as everything that goes with that schedule planner, uh, validation, holds, the whole bit. So welcome to the stream. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, you can watch the entire stream here. There's a live chat that we have, and I put the link to that live chat in the comments section. Um, it says join our live chat, not in the comment section, in the show description, I'm sorry. Um, if you want to ask questions in the live chat, you can do that. You can also just leave a comment directly on the YouTube page. Um, so again, welcome to today's stream on putting courses in your shopping cart, and I'm going to turn it over to our presenters. Thanks, Louie. Hi, everybody. My name is Meg Austin. I'm an academic advisor for the science majors at CSUMB, so that's biology, Marine Science, Environmental Science, Technology, and Policy, and Environmental Studies. Hi, everyone. My name is Gladys Cavadas, and I am the Academic Advisor for Cinematic Arts and Technology students, and also for Human Communication students. So today we're going to be, like Louis said, showing you how to add courses, different ways you can add courses to your shopping cart. So once you are ready and have what classes you are planning to take your first semester, the next step is to add the courses to your CMS shopping cart. I'm going to first show you how you get to your CMS shopping or your CMS. I'm going to share my screen with you here. So, from your dashboard, which is accessible from uh, mycsumb.edu, you will have a login. Uh, I'm already logged in, but you can log in up here at the top of your screen. Uh, once you log in with your Otter ID and password, you click your dashboard in the drop down menu. And just click the CMS link right there, and it'll take you to your screen center CMS. And this is how yours is going to look. It's going to look very similar to this. And the, the first strategy of how we're going to show you to add classes to your shopping cart today is using something called Schedule Planner. Schedule Planner is a really cool tool where you can generate all the possible schedules you can have with your chosen classes. So if you have your list of classes that you want to take uh, ready to go, then you can plug them into Schedule Planner and generate all the possible schedules you can have with those chosen classes because there could be multiple sections of the classes that you want to take. So there could be multiple schedule options. Um, and also what you can do with Schedule Planner is add in breaks. So you can add in when you're going to, if you have to work or if you have other responsibilities, or you know you just don't want to have classes at certain times, you can um, incorporate those breaks into Schedule Planner and it'll generate all the possible schedules you can have with those uh, breaks. So I'm going to show you how to access Schedule Planner from your CMS Student Center. It's actually right in underneath the Academics heading, and it's linked right there called Schedule Planner. And it'll take you to this next screen, and to follow just the step instructions, number one is click here to open it. And you may have to disable any pop-up blockers that your web browser um, currently has in order to this in order to this next window to open. So just keep that in mind. While this is loading, I just want to remind everyone: if you want to ask a question or advisors, we have a live chat going on. There's a link to that right in the description under the YouTube box. Also, you can just leave a comment directly on the YouTube page. We are just started talking about the schedule planner. OK, so once we're in schedule planner, you'll want to make sure that you are going to be searching for classes that are open. And this, this course status should automatically be set as searching for only open classes, because you're going to be most interested in searching for classes that are have seats available in them. Maybe other reasons why you want to search for classes that are closed in the future, but you're most likely going to be interested in uh, looking for open classes. So then we're, we can start off by starting to add courses to your schedule planner. So if you want to first go to add course, and you can either search for a course by subject code or by the course attribute, which means searching for which requirement that course fulfills. So the Arts GE or the Health and Wellbeing GE, a Humanities General Ed. But most students will want to search for classes by their subject code, because you already you have that written down if you know what um, courses you want to take in your first semester. 
I'm going to act like I'm a freshman and want to take HCOM uh, 211, which is an A1 general ed. So I'm going to look for HCOM subject. And then the, for the course number itself, so HCOM 211. And add this. And then I also want to start taking Spanish classes because I want, that's how I want to that's I want to take Spanish classes to fulfill my language proficiency requirement. So I'm going to want to take Spanish 101. So I'm going to look in the same drop down menu and look for the subject code of Spanish. And click the specific sec, uh, subject course code is 101. And add since I'm a freshman, I also want to add an FYS class. So I'm going to search for subject and look for FYS. And FYS is a first year seminar course, which is required for all first time freshmen. Okay, so those are the three classes that I want to take my first semester at CSUMB. Once I have those ready loaded on the right hand side here, I want to just want to hit back to go back to the home screen of Schedule Planner. And I want to add in a break because I have all have to work <laughs> first year here at CSUMB. So you'll have to title your break name. Even if it's not work, you have to title it something. So and I'm gonna have to work um, let's see here. 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Mondays and Wednesdays. And add break. <clears throat> so now we're actually ready to generate all the possible schedules. So hopefully my classes that I've selected will have times that work around my work schedule. Okay, so I have generated 111 possible schedules that I can have with my chosen classes and that work around my work schedule. To make to if that seems like an overwhelming number, then you can actually add in more breaks. So you can add in another, let's say, uh, just I don't want to have class um, on what, during lunchtime. Um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then you hit generate schedules again. And that will lower it down even more um, to get you a few, a little fewer options to choose from. So to preview what each of these schedules looks like, you can scroll your cursor over the magnifying glass, and you can get a little glimpse of what your weekly schedule will, will look like, including what your work schedule is and which classes you'll have. To get more details, you can click the view link, and you'll see which class offer of the week, what room it's in, if it's a lecture or if it's a discussion section or a lab. And this is the purple here represent my breaks. So my note when I don't want to have class and also when I have work. But come to 11 looks like it's at night for this particular section or uh, schedule on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then I have a Friday morning class for my FYS. Go back to my list of options, so I just click the back button. And then another handy feature is that you can compare up to four schedules at a time. So let's say I want to compare schedule five with schedule nine and 12. Then you click the compare button and you can kind of see them all together and see which one looks the best. Let's say you really like this one, open it up. At class, so oh, I love not having morning classes four days of the week. So I think I'm going to schedule this. I think I want to have this schedule. So once you're ready, once you're ready to pick out which of these schedules you like the best, then you can actually send. Um, where I say that, if you like a particular section of a class, like let's say I really want to have each one to eleven on Wednesday and Friday afternoon, starting at twelve. In that particular section. You can actually lock that section in by clicking the lock button. And then my actually my results went from 83, so if we click back, went down to 11 possible schedules. So that so all these all these schedules now only have that HCOM class 
at that day and time. So let's say I really love this schedule here. Then uh, once you're ready, you can send this exact schedule with all those classes right into your CMS shopping cart. And it will ask you, do you want to transfer want to to classes to your shopping cart? Do you want to continue? You need OK. And then I'll take you to another screen. And you follow the instructions that it says here to import those classes right into your CMS shopping cart, which will then help get you ready to enroll. Uh, we'll have you ready to enroll on your registration date and time. So, But remember, just because the classes are in your shopping cart does not mean that you're enrolled in them. It doesn't also mean that it also doesn't mean that you don't have a seat saved in them. It just means that those are your classes that you are wanting to take for your semester. So it's like an Amazon shopping cart. So um, that is one way to add classes to your CMS shopping cart. Um, and then Glad is going to talk about how you can add single courses to your shopping cart. So just want to jump in and remind all the viewers if you have any questions about this you can join our live chat. There's a link in the description of the YouTube uh, stream. And also you could just add a comment on the YouTube page as well. Um, adding courses to your shopping cart is something that you can do now and we recommend that you do now um, because you're going to be registering by the end of June. So now's the time to get started. And remember when you put stuff in your shopping cart it doesn't lock you in any way. You can swap stuff in and out the whole thing. So experiment. All right, so we're going to open up a new tab, and in this new tab, we're going to go to the CSUMB homepage. So let's just type in csumb.vu, and there's a lot of links on our homepage, but the one that we're going to need today is the class schedule. So the online class schedule, all you need to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page. And you're going to find this link right here. It says class schedule. So I want everybody to click on that. And this class schedule is a really good tool that we use because uh, this class schedule gives you a lot of information um, that is necessary. Everything from like the description of the course to what general education area it satisfies. Um, so you want to definitely look at the schedule as well. Um, but you can search, I just want to let you guys know that you can search by the subject of the course, right? Or you can also search by the university requirement for general education. So let's say your advisor advises you to enroll in a general education area C1 of the arts, okay? So what you want to do is click on this and then all of the courses that satisfy general education area C1, the arts, are listed here. So if your advisor said you can take any general education C1 course, any of them will do, and you realize that you are really, really interested in taking this movie mania class, go ahead and click on here. You click on it, you can see the description of the course on the right hand side. You can see under university requirements what GE it satisfies. Okay? You can see the open seats and the maximum of seats available in the class. And then also day, time, where it's going to meet. Um, so that's really good information. So, what we're going to do to add the course to your shopping cart is you see this number right here? number is called the class registration number. So what you want to do if you decide to take a uh, CART 231, Movie Mania, Music and Film, what you want to do is copy that number. Now what we're going to do is go back, we're going to go back to our student center. So remember when you clicked on CMS, it takes you directly to your student center. So then we want to click on Enroll. So this is to add individual courses, okay? 
not to really generate a schedule like how we did with Schedule Planner. This is if you only need to add one or two courses and you want to uh, search for it this way. So now that we copied this number, you want to paste it here. And then the next step is to click Enter. All right. And in this screen, you're going to find some information on here that is really uh, that that you know goes with the class. So, for example, you can see the title, Part Two Thirty One, Movie Mania. You can see that the course is still open. Okay. Um, you can also see if um, underneath, right here, in some of the courses. It lists prerequisites or co-requisites. So for this class specifically, it does not have a prerequisite or a co-requisite. So a prerequisite is a class that you need to take prior to enrolling in, let's say, Part 231. A co-requisite is a class that you need to take at the same time along with that course. So for example, many, many of the science courses will have attached labs, which are co-requisites that you need to enroll in. Okay, so all of that information will usually be listed right here below. So pay attention to that as well when you're adding a course to your shopping cart. And we'll add another class that has those that will have those listed there. So we'll provide another example of those. Yeah. And then the other thing is that we want to mention is this permission number box. So if a course needs a permission number, which means that it has a specific restriction in order to enroll in the course, this is where you enter the permission number. Now that doesn't mean that all courses require a permission number, it just means that if the course does, this is where you enter it. And then once you enter it, you can go ahead and click on next, and then look, the class is added to your shopping cart. So this is a great way to just add one class to your shopping cart or two. So the other one that we were that we could look into um, adding is bio. bio. So we're gonna add bio three hundred. We're gonna add bio three hundred so you can see the difference. Um, let's scroll down. All right, section three. Awesome. So, same thing. We want to copy the number, the class registration number, and then we are going to paste it. Click enter. Now, this one, you see how it has prerequisites, right? So, you want to make sure that you have already met all of those prerequisites in order to enroll in that course. Okay. All right. So we go ahead and click on next. And there you go. Now we have two courses on our shopping cart. Next step, um, the next step that we're going to do that is really important uh, for you to know, another great tool is the validation option. So to validate your shopping cart, you actually have to be in the plan tab in your CMS. So we're going to have a go ahead and click plan. And now it'll still have your shopping cart, but just have a couple adjustments where you can actually tick the boxes next to the classes that you put in your shopping cart. So I, we, the purpose of validating your shopping cart is to see if you are okay to enroll in those courses that you've chosen. And um, also, so that can mean a lot of things. So if there are any time conflicts with these classes, it'll tell you once you validate. If you don't meet the prerequisites of the certain classes, it'll tell you if you um, once you validate your shopping cart. Um, if there's instructor or department consent of the course, it'll let you know um, basically those restrictions once you validate your shopping cart. Um, and then you will then know if you are not able to enroll in a class due to having uh, prerequisites that you haven't met or um, anything like that, then you will um, either find another class or if you think you have met the prerequisites, then you may need to use a permission number like what I just mentioned earlier. So anyway, so we're going to go ahead and tick the boxes to the left of both of these classes because I want to check just to make sure I am okay to add all the classes that I want to add for my first semester. And then click validate. While this is, while this is loading, um, 
Oh, it loaded pretty quickly there. So, looks like we are okay to add the Cart 231 Movie Mania class. This one we got a red X next to it. It says enrollment requisites not met. So this particular student hasn't met the prerequisites of Bio 300, which we posted earlier, and they are listed again right here. If you're, for example, if you are a transfer student and you may you feel that you have met these classes or their equivalents at another uh, the previous school, then you just may need a permission number, which you will which you can then enter in the permission number box I thought I showed you earlier. And then we'll click back to our shopping cart. And then if, um, so let's say you can actually um, go to just start to enroll in the one class because we are ready to enroll in that class and then we can fix it and ready to enroll in the other class later. Um, but I want to go ahead and click that box next to the one class and click enroll. Okay, I'm going to turn on our mic. There we go. Um, and then we click the enroll. So this may, since this is a test student environment, it may or may not show what you would show after, yeah. So this is just because this is a test student environment, so we're not actually enrolling in a class, So, but that is the steps that you take. You click enroll, and then the next screen you click finish enrolling to enroll in the course. Okay. Yeah, actually, I do want to bring up something as well. So let's go back to our student center, okay? And in our student center, there's a few um, boxes that you definitely need to take a look at. One of them is this holds box. So if you have any holds on your account, they will be listed here. Um, some of you may see English remediation. If you're a freshman, then you need remediation, um, of course, for, for English. So that'll be on there. Um, or some, sometimes it says like uh, payment or, or amount remediation. Any holds, you want to make sure that uh, you get them taken care of because, especially the finance holds, because you will not be able to register for courses if you have a finance hold. So make sure to always check these on a regular basis. The other one that we want to look at is this enrollment dates. So uh, for Monty Ray, because this is a fake student account that we use so that we can just demonstrate, um, you know, different scenarios, but um, this enrollment box will let you know that, for example, Monty Ray was able to enroll in courses after April 21st, 2016, after 1.15 p.m., okay? So this is uh, Monty Ray's enrollment date, and you will have your own specific enrollment date on this box, okay? So make sure to look out for that as well. You should be able to see that now. You all should still should be able to access your CMS Student Center now and look at what your registration date is. Can we take a couple questions? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, I'll start with Crystal on YouTube because she asked this question even before we started. Um, she's got a couple, so let's see if we can take them one at a time. Um, right. Her first question is, uh, is it okay to take a friend or take parents to orientation? It is definitely okay to bring uh, a parent or a supporter or uh, some sort of uh, friend with you. You may they may not be with you the entire time of orientation. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other events that are specifically for um, you know parents, caregivers, supporters of students who are attending CSUMB that they'll be able to attend. But um, you definitely can bring guests. It's uh, but they just may not be at your side the entire time. Yes, and I mean, it, it all depends on you and what you feel comfortable with as well, because some of us do feel like we need a little bit extra support. We might feel a little bit nervous that we're in a completely new place, um, and we just kind of want that someone that's familiar um, with us. And it can be your parent, or it can be your best friend, or it can be your boyfriend or girlfriend or whoever you feel comfortable with, and it's totally fine if you do decide to bring someone along. Okay. Uh, her second question is, she's attending CSU Los Angeles right now. Her finals are done on June 10th. Should she mail her final transcript or should she take it up to orientation because it's on, hers is on the 16th? 
I would recommend that you contact the Office of Admissions because they have their uh, specific deadlines that you need to make sure you follow. Um, so contact the Office of Admissions and let them know your specific situation and they will definitely guide you in the right direction. Okay. And her last one is, uh, what does a transfer credit report mean? Because, and she says, because it doesn't show it as credit for a class you guys have. I'm not quite sure what she means by that. Um, okay, so the transfer credit report is a, a, it's a tool that we have within CMS where all of your transfer credits are posted. So let's say, since you went to Cal State LA, um, one of the things that's gonna happen is that once admissions receives your official transcripts, they will go ahead and post all of your uh, transfer credits on that transfer credit report page. And you'll be able to see all of the general education requirements that you've met and transfer electives that you came in with um, and which ones actually satisfied specifics for what, for what requirements. Um, so it is a really good tool for you to, to just check, especially transfer students, or also students that um, are coming in with AP exams uh, passed. So you want to make sure to look at your transfer credit report to see that we have your AP exams. Or let's say you are an incoming freshman, but you took one class at the community college um, during one summer, and you want to make sure that you actually receive credit for it. So that will be posted on your transfer credit report. Uh, the only thing is that admissions does need to have an official uh, transcript from that community college or official scores from College Board for your AP exams. Great. Okay, Nicole is in our live chat. She's saying, I've not spoken with an advisor yet, so I'm still unsure about what classes I need to put in my shopping cart for fall 16. How would I go about making sure I pick the correct classes for me? FYI, she is a transfer kin major. So if you haven't already, make sure that you're watching um, our live streams. We've had a couple live streams that are specific to give guidance for transfer students, even though it's not specific for major, but it's really useful. It'll give a lot of useful information about tools that you can find through our website to find requirements that you will need for your major. Also, on top of those live streams and the call-in hours that we have been having, um, you will should be receiving communication from your uh, specific kinesiology advisor for mm -hmm. guidance specifically for teenagers. I check your I would check your personal email and maybe check spam the spam box. Um, sometimes emails get sent to there. If um, you haven't received an email from your specific advisor yet, they if you haven't yet. It's okay, they are probably working on sending it soon. Um, and you can check out, we actually can share our screen again, and we can show you where you can find, oh, actually, I don't know if his contact information is on there yet, because he's a new kinesiology advisor. But his name is Alex Jenkins, um, and you can also contact our front desk um, to, to schedule a point of appointment with him. Our phone number is 815 And also, um, some advisors haven't sent out um, emails just yet because uh, not everybody has a CSUMB email as of right now. So um, some of us are waiting for all the CSUMB emails uh, to be for, for every student to be able to have a CSUMB email. So make sure to check once you have it. Um, you should be getting it uh, within the next week, uh, hopefully. And um, what you want to do is make sure to check your email constantly because that is our official way to get a hold of you. Um, we won't we won't contact you through your personal email. Usually, if you send us an email through your personal one, we will ask you to send to resend it uh, through your CSUMB email and uh, hopefully include your student ID number as well in the email so that we can look up your specific information. So. We will send out an email just giving you some general information as to how to uh, go about uh, choosing courses that are specific to you um, or uh, just like in general for transfer students and then another one for freshman students. So look out for that. 
Great. Um, Sierra had another question on top of that. Uh, she said, uh, I have the same question as Nicole, but she also wants to know, is there some sort of an online ed plan that she can make without talking to an advisor in person? No, there really is an online ed plan, um, but I, there's, I mean, you can communicate with us online, you know, over, over through Google Hangout or phone appointments, and we can obviously do our best to help you via email, but if you want a learning plan, uh, kind of a two-year plan, then it's really best to meet with us, um, so we can have a one-to-one -one conversation, get to know you, and um, know what goals you want to get out of your degree, um, so it's, there isn't right now an online platform for learning plans. It's more of an appointment based. And it's also um, important that you meet with your academic advisor because each student, uh, each student's information is very specific. It's different. Yours is going to be different than your roommates, even if you are in the same major. Um, you might come in with some classes already fulfilled, or you might not. You might need remediation. You might not. Um, so every student is different, so your individual learning plan is actually specific to you. Now there is, a, in the catalog under each major, there is a link uh, that you can see, it's called a pathway, and that is a tool that's just general, and it shows you like ideally what you should be taking per semester, and you can find that on our, on our catalog. On CSUMB, on the CSUMB page, so you can just click on that. One thing I want to just dovetail on that because I know students are kind of getting around this topic is, you know, when you're at a university, one of our philosophies is we want to give you the tools to be self-reliant. So even though we can tell you exactly what courses to take, uh, we want to give you the tools so that you can see that for yourself and not necessarily be relying on a semester semester to, to, to hold your hand, so to speak. So that's why between the catalog, the course pathways, the live streams, the guides and tools we have online, uh, and then also um, the open labs, which are starting today, you know, we want to give you enough tools that you can look at your schedule and be like, hey, these are the classes I know I need to take and this is my pathway forward. And when you meet with an advisor, you're less starting from scratch and you're more checking in and kind of reviewing what the work you've already done yourself. That's my public service announcement. For you. <laughs> yeah. Get off my soapbox now. A really good thing about creating an educational plan um, is that we pretty much map, map out the first two years, right? If you're a freshman, we map out your first two years with you. Um, we go over classes and options. Um, so we do that, but then um, once you're a junior, we also do it again for your junior and your senior year. So you don't necessarily have to come in all of the time because we do plan for it and we show you how to look up the information. We show you how to look up the catalog. We show you all of that. So then that way you know how to look up the information on your own as well. Um, but we're always here for you in case you ever need anything, in case you have any questions. Um, we're here. We ha also have walk-ins every single Wednesday. Um, so you're more than welcome to come in. Um, not for educational plans, because uh, that one takes a, a little bit longer. But for quick questions, registration, um, anything like that, that, that may be within like the 15-minute uh, time range. Go ahead and come on in and speak to one of us, and we will totally help you. That's what we're here for. Okay, let's take another one here. Uh, Diane is in the live chat asking, is there an easy step to get to your shopping cart, for example, to look at what you have in there? So maybe just a quick review of how to, how to get into your shopping cart and double check it. Sure, so we're gonna we'll go ahead and share our screen again. That's right. I think this is one. Um, can you see my CMS, Louis? Yeah. Do this. Um, do you know how to zoom in? Uh, just, can you make it bigger? Hold, hold down Control and hit the plus key. Awesome. Now we're getting. Yeah. Now we're talking. 
<laughs> okay, so to access your shopping cart right from your CMS Student Center homepage, you can a couple of ways. But how I do it, just click the uh, either the plan link or the enroll link, and it'll take you right into your shopping cart because that is where you go go from to enroll in your classes. So it's always going to take you to your shopping cart first. So that's the fastest way. Yeah. Just click on enroll, yeah. and there you go, directly to your shopping cart. Yeah. Um. Okay, um, I want to remind everyone, I think we're about ready to wrap up, so if you want to ask any questions, if you tried this, you know, this morning or the night before and you want us to help troubleshoot anything, um, you can join our live chat. We have the link right in the show description, or you can just uh, drop a comment on the YouTube page, and we will make sure to answer those if you can get in in the next minute or so. Diane is saying thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for coming in and asking questions on a lot of these live streams, Diane. I think you probably helped a lot of students. Uh, and thanks to all the students that are, are kind of helping out either in the live stream by asking us questions or, you know, through our, our Facebook group. And also, don't be afraid to email your advisor if you have any questions as well. Um, because that's what we're here for. We can answer any of your questions as well. In case, you know, the webinar's over, um, just feel free to choose an email. But same thing, uh, don't forget to add your student ID number because it makes it so much easier uh, just for us to get back to you faster with the actual information. Because then what we're going to have to do is email you back and ask you for your student ID number um, so that we can look up your information. Some of the things I want to uh, preview for the new students is um, you can load your shopping cart starting now and uh, orientations are going to start at the end of next week. So really in the next week we're going to be encouraging all the students to load their shopping cart so that when they come to orientation they have a general feel of what they already are planning to take. Also CSUMB emails are being created. A, a lot of students, maybe most students have them already, but I don't think 100% of the students do. Uh, but probably starting on Monday, all the emails that we send to, to students will be at the CSUMB email, and we'll do everything we can to make that known to everyone um, that you have a new email, and this is the only one that we're going to be sending communications to you from now on. And then lastly, we have webinars every day next week, except for Friday, I think. And all those webinars are going to be on how to load your shopping cart, how to validate. Um, I'm going to be sharing uh, more of our guides and tools videos. We have a, a a short playlist on YouTube that has quick videos on how to do all this. Uh, you can watch those and then you can jump in a live stream and ask any questions that you have. I don't think there's any more questions on the YouTube stream and there's no more in the live chat. So, hang on, one more refresh here. Okay, so I think we're good to go. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a good weekend.